eigenlijk zo in. Good afternoon, everyone. And I invite you now to take your seats. And please, we might all just stand for the graduation class of 2022.
welcome to this afternoon's celebration. Together, we join our graduating class of 2022 as they reach the end of their secondary school education at Cloche Ciaran. This graduating class has got a whole lot of history. Our theme for today's ceremony. They attended classes in prefabs, went on trips abroad right before a pandemic, and experienced the start of online classes. As the saying goes, there's a first time for everything. And the class of 2022 witnessed the majority of them. Our new school building brought a wonderful change of scenery after the first term of mask wearing and desk wiping. And over the last year and a half, it has become their new home. This year's graduating class has shown great persistence and strength throughout all the history they have been part of. And suffice it to say, they have a lot to remember about their time with us. I would like to extend a warm welcome to our guests of honour, our Board of Management Chairperson, Mr Tony Brazel, our Board of Management representatives, uh, Catherine Kennedy and Richard O'Donoghue, and our former teachers here at Colossus Ciaran, Ms Eileen Lohan and Ms Margaret Crowley. So without further ado, we will now begin our ceremony with some music performed by the school choir and soloist sixth year Deborah Kuma singing Seasons of Love under the baton of Fergal Moore and accompanied by Ms Una Feehan and some fifth year students. This is the choir's first performance in over two years and many new faces have marked very exciting times ahead. While many of you have heard the choir sing this song before, its return is at the special request of many of our sixth year students. So sit back and enjoy. Five hundred twenty-five thousand six hundred minutes Five hundred twenty-five thousand moments, oh dear Five hundred twenty-five thousand six hundred minutes How do you measure, measure a year? In daylights, in sunsets, in midnights, in cups of coffee In inches, in miles, in laughter, in strife Well done. That was amazing. 
I'd now like to invite the chairperson of our Board of Management, Mr. Tony Brazel, to say a few words. Good afternoon, everyone. And on behalf of the Board of Management, I'd like to welcome each and every one of you to this great day for us in Kalash to Kiran. Red Letter Day probably is the best way to describe it, but this is a day we've been waiting for for many years. Uh, so on behalf of the Board of Management, and I'm joined here by Deputy Richard O'Donoghue and Catherine Kennedy from the Board of Management. A great welcome to all of you. This is the culmination of a lot of hard work that has been going on for many years to get to this stage. Can I just say, as I'm talking about the Board of Management, people probably don't fully understand what we do or who we are. We have a great board here in Croom. It's made up of public representatives, members of the teaching staff, representatives of parents and professional people. And we've worked very well, I'm chair here for the last five or six years, we've worked very well in ensuring the future of the school. It's our job to look after the general standards to make sure that the ethos that we all strive for is achieved. From time to time we're asked to adjudicate on matters which uh, our approach has always been student-centred and school-centred, whatever is best for the students and for the school. And in that regard, uh, um, I must say, we have very little problems and very little difficulty in that. And I want to commend all the students for that reason. It's um, interesting that we're here today. It's, it's like, as someone said to me earlier, we've gone from purgatory to heaven because this is, this is really the ultimate in what we, we've, we, we, we're now enjoying. This school is probably one of the most modern schools now in Ireland, and we're all very proud of that. But the makeup of the school is what's important. The school is not just a building, it needs teachers. And I'd like to say a very special thank you to Gerard and Evelyn and all the teaching staff for their contribution to the work of the school. You heard, in fact, that the class of 22, some of them managed to go skiing and some of them actually went on an exchange to America. So much happens in this school outside of school hours, which requires the dedication of the teachers and them, and they're giving up their time voluntarily to do things. Every year, we missed it last year, but every year, the school musical is something of a treat, which we all look forward to inside in Mary Immaculate. So we're very fortunate that we have a nice school, we have all the facilities that we could ever wish for, and we also have a teaching staff who are very dedicated to looking after the very best needs of our students. As it's probably topical of the moment, talking about the difficulties of children with autism gaining access, just like to refer to the fact that here in Collage de Kiran, we have two units of six, six each, that's 12 students, within the school itself for children with particular needs. The basic requirement for them to enter into the class is that they must have an autistic certification. And, you know, it's a wonderful thing to say that that, <clears throat> that new endeavor of ours, that unit is fully integrated into the school. There's a big row going on at the moment in Dublin about set, setting up separate places for autistic children. We've, in, we've done it here in the last two years. They're fully integrated into the school seamlessly and doing very, very well. And I want to commend Jar and his staff for ensuring that. Thank you very much. I, um, I also want to say thank you to the parents today who entrusted all these students to our care <clears throat> to look after them for their educational needs. I hope we haven't let you down. I think we have 
a great, great cross-section of students here with different, uh, different abilities and who are going into the world well, well equipped to meet any challenges. The, the difficulties in, in, in running a school are, are, are many and varied. I should remind you that as we sit here today in this huge arena, that in the year 2000, the total enrolment in Kalash to Kiran was somewhere like 99 students. So we've come a long way. The standards have been rising. And, you know, there was a time when people came to Croom because they couldn't get into a school elsewhere. That's no longer the case. Last uh, September, when we took the last enrolment, we nearly filled the number of places on the first application. And I've no doubt next September when we open up again that we'll fill our complement. We, we usually take about 140, 144 students first year. I've no doubt next time round it'll be full on the first, the first call. And that's a great tribute to how people now see the place, not just as a place to go to because you couldn't get in elsewhere, but because the standards here are so high, the facilities are so good, that this is the place to be. So thank you to everyone for bringing us to that point. To the students, I just want to say, this is the big, the big day. This is one of the days in your life that you will recall. This is one of the days that <clears throat> will stand out when you look back on your life, whether it's your wedding, your first child, or whatever it might be, this is one of those days. Um, we're happy that you've gone through the system between five and six years for most of you, and you've come out at the other end. We hope we've given you the skills and the tools to meet life. Probably people don't know this, but this school is the second largest theatre school to the old LIT, to TUS. And that a great tribute. And later on in the year, we'll be announcing a real connection with TUS into the future. They're helping us with our, our technology, STEM our STEM, our science and technology room, which in fact <clears throat> is partially equipped and they're going to help us to finish it out and we'll have a special relationship with them from a point of view of entry. So the pathways for all of you as you go forward are many and varied. The one thing I will say to you is that whilst you're graduating today, this is not the end of education. You have to know that. And it's, I, I'm saying that just as much for the adults as for the students, because in life we're learning all the time. And if in later years you want to get promotion, it's that extra little bit of education that will push, push you into the, into the job you want. So I'm just saying to all of you, well done. Remember Collage to Kiran. It's been good to you. And when in the future you have the opportunity as an employer or whatever, that you will always remember Collage to Kiran. You will always be welcome here. The staff like to meet people who have come back from the past and who want, even if you want advice or any bit of direction, you're always very welcome. So to everyone, well done, congratulations, this is your day. I'd now like to call on our principal, Mr. Gerard O'Sullivan, for the principal's address. Now, thank you, Ms. Canty. Uh, thank you, Tony. Um, so, invited guests, parents, fellow colleagues, and you, our graduation class of 2022. Um, it's hard to follow what Tony has said there as an intro. I think it was very genuine and heartfelt and it hit a lot of the speaking points that I would you know, generally like to echo. Um, today is a very special day for everyone here. It's a special day for us and it's a special day for you, our graduates. And it's important in days like this just to take a minute just to appreciate uh, what's going on and the people around you because all these things move far too fast. For many of us here today, graduation ceremony signifies the end of a school year. 
For you, today's graduation class of 2022, it's a little different. Today mark, marks the formal conclusion of your second, sef, second level education. However, endings are just beginnings in disguise. The celebration of today's graduation will be a special memory for each one of you. And graduation is a time for memories, it's a time for goodbyes, and in a way it's a time of sadness. Today we say goodbye to you and you eagerly say hello to your next opportunities, college, work, new experiences, new friends and your lives. In many ways, this graduation is a rite of passage. Today you graduate to adulthood and the lives and careers and experiences that you can now go and create for yourselves. The past six years have been memorable ones. In education as in life, you get out of each what you put in and contribute to each. And I'm sure you have so many memories of classes, trips, interactions, achievements, and hundreds of positive achievements over the past six years. For all, that, for all of you that have put yourselves out there and experienced so much, well done and congratulations. As Tony said, these memories and interactions will be fond memories for a lifetime. And equally, you have given us so many reasons to be very proud of you over the years, and today is just another one of those times. So well done and thank you all. For you, our parents and guardians uh, present here today, today is a very proud day for you also. This distinguished group of young adults have done you and us very proud. Thank you genuinely for partnering with us on this precious journey of your son and daughter's education. Ours is a shared pride on this special day. Your graduation is a very special occasion. It is a celebration of your hard work, your commitment, and specifically a celebration of your achievement in completing now five or six years of your second level studies. Today is a time for us all to acknowledge each of your achievements and for you to enjoy your success. It is just rewards for your hard work and commitment. And in many ways, your graduation is a shared success as a word of thanks must go to friends, family, parents, guardians, and all who have supported each of you on your journey. And I'm sure you will all agree that along with these people that we are extremely fortunate, and to echo what Mr. Basil just said, we are extremely fortunate in Colossia Kiran to have such a committed, professional, and personable teaching staff in Colossia Kiran who have worked tireless, tirelessly with all of you over the past six years. And on my behalf and yours, I would like to acknowledge and thank in a special way all of your teachers, our administrative staff, our caretaking team, our SNAs, my two deputy principals, the entire team at Colossia Kiran that have brought you to this mile milestone. So I would like to give a big round of applause to all those people. <laughs> so beyond uh, that, it is my duty today to offer you some advice for your future. Although, and some of the graduates will find this hard to believe, I hardly feel older than many of you. But I'll give you some advice nonetheless. Uh, the following are three very short stories which have resonated with me and hopefully will provide you with some wisdom that may help you as you set sail on life's journey beyond the safe har harbour that has been Colossia to Kiran and your secondary school. The first one relates to happiness. So everyone chases after happiness, not noticing that happiness is right at their heels. One day a fisherman was lying on a beautiful beach with his fishing pole propped up in the sand and his solitary line cast out into the sparkling blue surf. He was enjoying the warmth of the afternoon sun and the prospect of catching a fish. About that time, a businessman came walking down the beach, the beach trying to relieve some of the stress of his workday. He noticed a fisherman sitting on the beach and decided to find out why the fisherman was fishing instead of working harder to make a living for himself and his family. You aren't going to catch many fish that way, said the businessman. You should be working rather than lying on the beach. The fisherman looked up at the businessman, smiled and replied, and what might my reward be? Well, you can get bigger nets and catch more fish, was the businessman's answer. And then what would my reward be, said the fisherman, still smiling. The businessman replied, you may make money and you'll be able to buy a boat, which will then result in larger catch catches of fish. And then what will my reward be, asked the fisherman again. The businessman was beginning to get a little irritated with the fisherman's questions. You can buy a bigger boat and hire some people to work for you, he said. And then, what will my reward be, replied the fisherman. The businessman was getting angry. Don't you understand? You can build up a fleet of fishing boats, sail all over the world, and let your employees catch fish for you. Once again, the fisherman asked, and then what will my reward be? The businessman was red with rage and shouted at the fisherman, don't you understand that you can become so rich that you will never have to work for your living again? You can spend all of your days sitting on this beach, 
looking at the sunset, and he wanted a care in the world. The fisherman, still smiling, looked up and said, and what do you think I'm doing right now? I think the last two years have, in many ways, uh, COVID has brought many, much hardship and sorrow, but in many ways it has forced many of us to reevaluate uh, life and the simplicity of happiness in life. And there is a beautiful life of simplicity calling out to all of those who will listen. It invites us to live the life we were born to live, not the life of our neighbour is seeking to achieve. Simplicity invites us to pursue the things that we value most, not the values of billboards, magazines, or the values we see online. It invites us to remove the distractions that keep us from living and enjoying life to the fullest. When we stop chasing the world's definition of happiness, we begin to recognize decisions, the experience, happiness has been right in front of us all along. On belief, as you venture out into this world, trust your intuition, listen to your heart, and strengthen your resolve with a confident self-belief. You must believe in yourself. A gentleman was walking through an elephant camp and he spotted that the elephants were, weren't being kept in cages or being held by use of chains. All that was holding them back from escaping the camp was a small piece of rope tied to one of their legs. As the man gazed upon the elephants, he was completely confused as to why the elephants did not just use their strength to break the rope and escape all of the camp. They could easily have done so, but instead they didn't try at all. Curious and wanting to know the answer, he asked the trainer nearby why the elephants were just standing there and never tried to escape. The trainer replied, When these elephants are very young and much smaller, we use the same size rope to tie them, and at that age, it is enough to hold them. As they grow up, they are conditioned to believe that they cannot break away. They believe that the rope can still hold them, so they never try to break free. The only reason that the elephants weren't breaking free and escaping from the camp was that over time they adopted the belief that it just wasn't possible. So, no matter how much the world tries to hold you back, always continue, always continue with the belief that, you, that anything you want to achieve is possible. Believing you can become successful is the most important step in actually achieving it. And finally, on balance. Many years ago, a wise peasant lived in China. He had a son who was the apple of his eye. He also was the proud owner of a white stallion horse, which he believed, which everyone admired. One day, his horse escaped from the grounds and disappeared. The villagers came to him one by one and said, you are such an unlucky man. It is such bad luck that your horse has escaped. The peasant responded, who knows? Maybe it's bad, maybe it's good. The next day, the stallion returned, followed by 12 wild horses. The neighbours once again visited him and congratulated him this time on his look. Again, he just said, who knows? Maybe it's good, maybe it's bad. As it happened, the next day, his son was attempting to train one of those wild horses when he fell down and broke his leg. Once more, everyone came with their condolences. It is terrible, again, he replied. Who knows? Maybe it's bad, maybe it's good. A few days passed and his poor son was limping around the village with his broken leg when the emperor's army entered the village announcing that a war was starting and that they were enrolling all of the young men in the village. However, they all left the peasant's son since he had a broken leg. Everyone was extremely jealous of the peasant. They talked about his sheer good luck while the old man just muttered, who knows, maybe it's bad, maybe it's good. So when things happen in life and Personally, I would love to have learned this earlier in life. When things happen in your life, it is most important to, to keep a neutral attitude. Seek balance and perspective as you navigate life's challenges. And that's not always easy when you're in the eye of those storms. No one knows the true reasoning behind what happens and why. And as you close this chapter in your lives, you begin another. So to tie the three stories together, take time to value what matters. Believe in yourself and your abilities. Be happy and try to take and develop a considered and balanced approach to life's highs and lows. Life is a beautiful journey of excitement and opportunity. When disappointment or adversity pre presents, steel yourself in the knowing that the sun, is, the sun is still shining above any dark clouds. Take comfort in the positivity of friends and family and remind yourself that all storms will pass. Be true to yourself, 
In considering how we address the challenges of life, very often our decisions are influenced by the people in our lives, both positive and negative. Make your decisions and embrace your opportunities. Don't worry what others might think. Again, as with most things in life, it is a case of mind over matter. As the saying goes, the people that matter in your life will never mind, and those who mind don't really matter. To quote and summarize with Steve Jobs, the co-founder and CEO of Apple, your time is limited, so don't waste your, t your life living someone else's. Don't let the noise of others' opinions drown out your own inner voice. And most important, have the courage to follow your heart and intuition. They somehow already know what you truly want to become. Everything else is secondary. Today you will receive many awards, and it is only fitting that I pay tribute to all of you that have been nominated and all that will be award, awarded awards of excellence here today. Well done and congratulations to each one of you and all of you on your success. However, however, more importantly, I would like to congratulate all of you on your hard work, commitment and positive engagement that you have shown over the past five and six years. These traits alone are far more important and far more significant than your achievements alone. Remember, these are the key components to success in school as in life. As you now graduate from Clóisí Giron, I would like to remind you that hard work, commitment and a positive engagement are the components of your future success. If you remember anything of this speech, let it be this. In life, your only difference between opportunity and adversity is attitude. Be positive, be optimistic. After all, you control your desti destiny. There are no wrong decisions in life and there are many lessons in life's journey and you will take many roads. As you leave today, I wish you well. Develop your potential to the fullest. Be committed to your personal and professional growth and become the best that you can. Always value what matters. Believe in yourself and seek balance in your life. Be good ambassador, ambassadors for Colossi Kiran wherever you go and continue to do us proud. Finally, I wish you, our graduates, health, happiness and every success in all that you do. Be optimistic, embrace your lives and create your futures. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. O'Sullivan. I'd now like to call on Ruth Daly um, to come forward to the stage to share. <laughs> Ruth is going to share some fond memories from first year. It is an honour for me to welcome parents, family members, teachers, friends, and of course, the class of 2022 here this afternoon. <laughs> Can you believe it? Almost seven years ago, most of, most of us walked into prefab paradise with our blazers and red ties, oblivious to the fact that we were about to start what would truly be the best years of our lives. It has been a long and short six years here at Kalash to Kiran. Long because of all the drama and homework, short because of all the lifelong friends, precious memories, and the amazing things we learned between the occasional hard work. <laughs> our first year of secondary school was the start of a whole new chapter. It was exactly like how we were all told in primary school. We were now the little fish in the big pond. I am sure first year is a blur to us all by now. It feels like a lifetime ago. The baby faces and the huge school bags. However, as the new kids on the block, we settled into school quickly to earn the worst first years of all time title. <laughs> Thank you to Mr. Gilfoyle, our year head at the time. I'm sure we all wrecked your head. Zara, Lisa and Nicole started off the school year strong and quickly set their eyes on sports day. They trained religiously every morning for their 100 meter sprint race between classrooms, or as they were back then, prefabs, D3 and A4, just to make it in time for roll call. 
competing against Mr. Flannery, of course. <laughs> or who remembers when Sam McNamara was asked his punishment work from Miss Canty to write a three-page essay on the inside of a tennis ball? <laughs> I'm sure if he had to write an essay on a slitter, it would have been a different story. <laughs> Our first school trip was to the BT Young Scientist exhibition in Dublin. This was held just after our Christmas break, and so we all got a chance to enjoy Thunderland and ice skating afterwards. However, there were a few bru bruises on the bus home. The year flew by, and before we knew it, it was Easter time. We all remember Mr. O'Shaughnessy's life stories in Junior Cert Science. Some of us may even remember around Christmas or Easter time, or first year, when an inspector was coming into one of Mr. O'Shaughnessy's science classes, and he had to hide the whole back row including Josh Lung and Sam McNamara, <laughs> to ensure that Omega-1's behaviour was as flawless as always. I'm sure those of you who I mentioned are all still sitting in the back rows. First year was a year when relationships began to build. Relationships with friends, teachers, and even the two-week-long first-year romantic relationships. <laughs> you all know who you are. With the blink of an eye, we were facing into our first year summer exams, but more importantly for all of us, the end of our first year here at Colosh Ciaran. Beginning first year in August 2016 was the start of a whole new chapter. But look at us all now. We are grateful for what we have learned here in Colosh Ciaran and all the precious memories we will bring with us. But just because we are leaving and it hurts, this school will always be part of us all, no matter what. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ruth. That was lovely. So it gives me great pleasure here today now to um, ask the class of Ingesa to come up to receive your graduation medals. So if you're all ready. Okay. Make sure, guys, make sure you wait there for a photograph of Barry. Mubarak Adelikon. <laughs> Keith Alassani. Sarah Daly. <laughs> Kayla Arizagado. <laughs> Alex Barry. <laughs> Farah Bennett. Maciek Birovashkowski. <laughs> Oshin Brady Hamstag. <laughs> Courtney Brown. <laughs> Andrew Buckley. <laughs> James Burke. <laughs> Grace Collins. Becky Daly. Ruth Daly. Reggie Hogan. Aoife McInerney. Roisin Murray. Niall O'Donoghue. Lisa Ryan. Phoebe Sheehy. Kate Wall. 
Kean Shinners. Mansur Akon. I'm going to ask Molly Healy Passas um, to sing for us, please. And she's accompanied by um, our pianist, Miss Una Feehan, and the school choir. Que fuese un sueño, te sentía junto a mí. Sé que estás ahí, que te encontraré, aunque tarde una vida, yo jamás renunciaré. Cualquier distancia yo el amor alcanzaré. I go 
I go the distance I'll be right where I belong Gracias. Um, <laughs> I should really say merci. <laughs> I'm going to ask Alex Barry to come to the stage to regale us with his memories of second year. Before I begin, I want to thank Ruth for her amazing recount of our first year at Kalash de Kiran. From the ups and downs to the laughs and stress of becoming a part of a totally new environment. But we made it through our first year of secondary school. We were once told that we were, and I quote, the worst first year group ever. <laughs> I believe we have come a long way from that statement. Throughout the year, we were reminded of how we are not little first years anymore and how we'd have to put our heads down in order, in order to do well in the junior cert. I have, a vivid I, I'm sorry guys. I have a vivid memory of being in French class in that godforsaken G block, and Miss O'Brien <laughs> letting us know that if we didn't start studying for French now, we would be disappointed in our results. No one listened at all because we were second years. Why would we? <laughs> I swear we were more stressed uh, about getting a seat at the back of the class um, than for the actual junior cert itself. Mr. Bennett would remind our business class of how important our classroom-based assessments were. And if we did not have them done, we would fail our junior cert. <laughs> my, oh my, what a lie. <laughs> um, speaking of these events uh, makes me reminisce about our old school campus. Getting the fresh air after every class, having to walk a mile in unsuitable, in unsuitable weather, and classes being too cold or too warm. It really was prefab paradise. I just want to say that if any of you guys start to have breathing problems in the future, <laughs> make sure to contact the school and a lawyer. <laughs> but on another note, imagine how strong our immunity is from surviving those damp, moldy, mushroom-infected prefabs. <laughs> Actimel's got nothing on us. <laughs> I was recently scanning through our yearbook from 2018 and I went to the back of the yearbook. All I have to say is the baby faces never faded. Looking through its pages, I was reminded of all the events that had happened in the span of one year, from going to the burn and to having sports day at our own prestigious campus. Sadly, I did not get to experience the burn trip, but from all the stories I was told, it sounds like you guys had an eventful time. From Deborah's famous mozzarella cheese, boots in the fur, <laughs> singing on the bus to pass the time to the, let's just say, an active night at the hostel. The one thing, <laughs> the one thing that the burn trip taught us well is to never eat too much spaghetti or you'll get food poisoning. I remember, I remember how disappointed our year was when we found out that our campus would be hosting Sports Day. From the mighty, prestigious campus of UL to the modest and unamusing campus of Kailash de Kiran. But without saying the obvious downgrade, I still believe we had a pretty good day. From the obstacle courses, to the sumo wrestling, to the tug of war, and of course, the going home. I promised myself I'd get into shape for the next sports day. I didn't. And I was out of breath all day once again. Second year was the year where we became comfortable with our school environment, our new teachers, and our friends. It was the stress-free year, as Ms. Tobin used to say. I am truly grateful I got to experience our second year at Kalash Shikran with all of you. I genuinely could not ask for a better year group. I would, like you, I would like to thank you all for listening to me speak for these past few minutes. And I also want to say a huge thank you to Ms. Canty for being an astounding year head to us all in second year. Thank you. Well done, Alex. Um, I'm going to now ask Edison, please, to come to receive your graduation medals. <laughs> My
Mawada Abujana. Ellie Kameen. Zara El Hassani. Malak El Tigani. James Enright. Adrian Farkas. Rafael Fulauka. Larissa Jek. Sophia Gerhardi de Agranada. Dara Greer. Robin Grimes Morn. Gabriela Gre Eschek. Daria Grezchaukitia. Chloe Garini. Mika Jail Jalermo. Scott Hayes. Alianco Healy Passas. Molly Healy Passas. Tristan Howe. Hubert Janajewski. Gavin Norris. Adam O'Neill. Philippe Fanaisek. I'm now, going, I'm now going to ask Aya Ismail to the stage <laughs> with her memories of third year. The junior sir, the junior sir, the junior sir. Those three words had haunted us for the previous two consecutive years. It was to the degree that the exam almost felt like a fable. It was all we were reminded of, and we continued to keep it as just that. We left it in the back of our minds as just a reminder. That completely changed the minute we stepped into Kalashi on September of 2018. An exam that seemed so foreign suddenly became tangible. In fact, I still remember Mr. Murphy telling our JC business class on the very first day of third year that we had exactly 33 weeks until our exams. <laughs> the first few weeks back consisted of a myriad of teachers uttering encouraging words. The most encouraging of them all being Ms. O'Brien, who at that stage was our newly found year head. Which, by the way, can I say, that after having two different year heads within the span of two years, she did a commendable job of building motherly relationship that we will remember for the rest of our lives. <laughs> I think that many of you would agree with me when I, really say, when I say that it really was their time to turn. From that moment forward, we all became a team ready to face the many hurdles destined to come our way. The months building up to our pre's 
were swept away quite quickly. We completed our CBAs, began work on our practicals, presented projects, and organized ourselves for the coming months. During that time period, Mr. Hayes decided that his junior set English class was responsible enough to take part in a gift exchange, refusing to let us miss out on the Christmas spirit. All of us, everyone loved their presents, and it was a core memory for many of us. Although, Reggie, I don't recall receiving said gift. <laughs> that being said, our teachers never failed to make us feel at ease during the midst of our exam seasons. I think that we can all agree that our faculty are second to none, and even though they made us work extremely hard during our junior cycle, they always made sure that it was enjoyable. Our pre-exams, sorry, <laughs> may arrived in the blink of an eye and along with the sports day. Little did we know that up until recently, it would be our last sports day for a few years to come. It's safe to say that with our exams quickly approaching, we made the most of it. We enjoyed the food trucks and all that they had to offer. Some of us, a little too much. Am I right, Maverick? <laughs> Some of our lovely ladies, include, including Nicole, Deborah, and Zara, also blessed us with their beautiful karaoke. And with that day, and with that, the day's events came to a close. Two weeks later, our time, period, our time had come to sit the long-awaited junior set. The benches adjacent to the prefabs back in prefab paradise were jam-packed the morning before every exam. It was heartwarming to see us all sat there looking over the remnants of study notes. We encourage each other and push through our final hurdle. Third year taught us many skills and re revealed the unlocked potential that this graduating class contains. We worked extremely hard and carried on that hard work and determination into our senior cycle. Thank you. I'm now going to ask Kemi, please, to come to the stage for your medals. Sarah Castajon. Marcelo de Silva Pereira. Edith Agareba. John Foley. <laughs> Melissa Holland. <laughs> Aya Ismail. <laughs> Kira Kelly. <laughs> Shauna Kelly. <laughs> Megan Kylie. Deborah Kuma. <laughs> Abigail Lappin. <laughs> Kevin Lawler. <laughs> Aoife Leonard. <laughs> Thomas Leszczynski. <laughs> Josh Long. Brian Lowe. <laughs> Holly Lowe. <laughs> Jack Lynch. <laughs> Andrew McNamara. <laughs> Sam McNamara. <laughs> Susanna Meshevsic. <laughs> Aidan Maloney. <laughs> Emma O'Brien. <laughs> and Amy Phelan.
Can I ask Aoife McInerney to the stage, please? Thanks, Miss O'Brien. And just like that, our ties were blue. On behalf of the class of 2022, I think it's safe to say in Portia we didn't spend our time in class. Looking back on TY, it seems like it was just yesterday. There was the ploughing championships, the sleepover in the old campus, um, work experience, the day we went driving. Our transition year began just like every normal transition year with what we were told would be a walk in Killarney. <laughs> I just want to emphasize the word walk. <laughs> this walk did in fact turn into a three hour hike up a mountain. <laughs> Our last Christmas before COVID, we went ice skating. It was eventful to say the least. I won't name names, but I don't think we'll see Adrian Farkas back in the rink anytime soon. <laughs> Killary has to be up there one of the most memorable trips. I remember feeling so disconnected from the outside world as we were in the middle of nowhere with no reception. We carried out so many activities from the gorge walk, the mud walk, zip lining, to the evening activities in the big dome or the mini games in the kitchen doing wall sits until we all passed out. The, musical, the last musical that was staged was when we were in fourth year we did Beauty and the Beast. Just try to imagine the faces of my parents when I told them that I got to play a role of a plate. <laughs> Don't feel bad for me. Abby Laffin played a fork and Jody Ryan played a spoon. <laughs> Austria, where do I begin? The past few days, I've tried to come up with the appropriate vocabulary for the experience we faced in February 2020, but I simply can't. However, I do remember the first day on the slopes, all of us lined up next to each other. Um, and the only way I can describe it was like a domino. Once one of us slipped, we all went down together. <laughs> the evening walks to Spar in the snow were unforgettable. There was no better feeling than being up on those slopes. Mr. Maloney and I used to fly, fly down those black slopes. Unlike Rosie Murray and Becky Daly, I don't think, I think they'd say that there wasn't much skiing done in the hospital. <laughs> there was a moment when a one-way return flight was being booked for us when no one would confess to eating Hubert's Nature, Nature Valley Bear. <laughs> Lesson learned, never mess with a man's food. <laughs> I know I speak for everyone when I say the highlight of the trip was Miss O'Brien, Miss McCarthy and Mr. Maloney's karaoke tunes. Some of us also went on the American Exchange, and by all accounts, New York is exactly like the movies. If you want to know what it's like to be in High School Musical, go to Springfield High School. Everyone made lifelong friends and everlasting memories. Shortly after both trips, the 12th of March came, a day nobody expected. For the class of 2022, it was spent in the old campus. We were all curious to find out if we were getting an extended two-week Easter break. In registration and throughout the whole day, we were asking teachers. Of course, they didn't know, except for Mr. Hanley, who said, and I quote, that there wasn't a hope of the schools closing. <laughs> By lunchtime, Leo Farrakhar announced the schools had closed. <laughs> Unfortunately, the 12th of March was the last day in person as fourth year students. Transition year truly was our transition from junior to senior cycle. Fourth year played a huge part in our lives and the students graduating here today. Think about how far we've come individually and as a class. This year, this year allowed us to mature and gain independence to become your future surgeons farmers, lawyers, nurses, <laughs> teachers, and the list is endless. Thank you.
Thank you, Aoife, for those lovely stories from your transition to senior cycle. I'm now going to call Matthew O'Rourke, who's going to perform Celebrate with the school choir, Miss Una Feehan, and fifth-year music students, Harris McNamara and Kieran Wall. <laughs> I'm now going to ask O'Carolyn, the class of O'Carolyn, to receive their medals.
Bodroff. Gavin Cotter. Mohammed Harris. Owen Kelleher. Victoria Muko. Nicole Offer. Dermot Ryan. Jody Ryan. Sudipta Sarka. Crystal Maid Safuntas. Kira Sheehan. Olivia Shevietz. Anastasia Sorokina. Justina Sorovka. Monica Thapa. Zahir Uden. Anna Ulich. Aisha Wadud. Kasper Vazek. Ben White. Angelica Zaranova. Mark Zubavil. I'm now going to ask Andrew Buckley to come to the stage to talk to us about his memories of fifth year. It is an honour to stand here today to reflect on the beginning of our senior cycle in Colossus de Ciaran. Thank you, Aoife, for reminding us about all the great adventures we got to enjoy in TUI. Unfortunately, we did not get up to much activities in fifth year, because I don't know if you've heard of this thing called the COVID-19 pandemic, <laughs> but it definitely was on in every news channel for two years. We anticipated our return to school as we hadn't seen each other for such a long period. We were all so excited to see each other's faces once again, but could not as face masks covered half of our faces. Fifth year was also the year where we greeted many new people who skipped from TY and it wasn't until this year we found out what they looked like without their masks. <laughs> On the day of our return to Prefab Paradise, we were greeted with many new precautions we had to follow, such as cleaning our tables and desks after each use, which was probably the first time they'd ever been cleaned. <laughs> Once we were all settled back in with all the new changes, I think we can all agree that we, that we found that there was a big jump from junior cert to leave insert. The workload was tough and demanding, but we prevailed, and once Christmas time rolled around, we were all thrilled for a nice, well-deserved break. But little did we know, it wasn't going to be two weeks out of school, but two months out of school. The two months out of school, and we'd have to learn online, which was a new experience for us all. The learning from home brought teaching and learning to a new style, which caused some problems, such, when, such as when all of Miss Laffin's physics class was in a class called, which she did not know how to join. And who can forget Mr. Ryan's weekly assemblies that we definitely didn't fall asleep to. <laughs> <laughs> While 
Once the lockdown ended, we were all so enthusiastic to return to school once again, but upon our return, we had left prefab paradise behind us and walked into the beautiful building we're in today. After so long, we finally received our new campus that we'd been promised since first year. When we first entered the campus, we all felt lost as a brand new building surrounded us, and some of us kept getting lost in the hallways, reminding us of first year. We could finally say goodbye to the mushrooms growing from the ceilings and the school's very own geography display of stalactites. <laughs> Through all of our ups and downs in fifth year, between lockdowns and the new campus, there was only one thing that remained the same. It was the beginning of our course, coursework for the Leaving Cert. In fifth year, the words we heard the most were, this isn't my Leaving Cert, I've sat my exams. <laughs> the countdown to exams and began and projects were underway. And if you ask Ms. Cassidy, she'd be able to tell you how many hours it is until our English paper won. <laughs> Before we knew it, we were already sitting our summer exams. Well, sitting them from home, since COVID was rampant in their year at the time. But here we are today, and all the hard work we did in fifth year will pay off in the coming weeks. Thank you very much. <laughs> That was lovely, Andrew, thank you. I'll now ask Taylor, the class group Taylor, to come up to receive their medals. <laughs> Thomas Coleman Walsh. Yaya Zena Barry. <laughs> Owen Duffy. <laughs> Damien Ignachuk. <laughs> Victoria Laskowska. <laughs> Ricardo Lopez. <laughs> Danica Martin. Alice Nasonova. <laughs> Diana Nedelko. <laughs> Malika Nisar. <laughs> Shane O'Carroll. <laughs> Jake O'Connell. <laughs> Abby O'Halloran. Matthew O'Rourke. Grace O'Dudu. Zenadine Osmani. Jovi Vicky Panda Nutella. Dilek Dilek Penarsi. Victoria Plakta. <laughs> Matush Krivashna. <laughs> Mihol Kwan. <laughs> Queen. Naomi Salmonte. <laughs> Oliver Sakawashki. <laughs>
I'm now going to ask Victoria Muko to the stage to regale us with her memories of sixth year and senior cycle and life in CCO. Okay, so we're almost there, okay. I'm going to take a moment to acknowledge the heartfelt speeches that were delivered by my classmates. I know the amount of hard work and dedication that was put into them. And it's nice to take a trip down memory lane and relive some of the moments we shared. They did a wonderful job of retelling them. But I hope I don't disappoint you by saying that I won't be taking the same approach. I'm standing in front of a room full of students who are each their own unique, creative, and talented individuals. And it's not an easy task to take the voices of over 100 and ultimately turn them into one. There is not one moment, one disaster, joke, or story that I can safely say has been a lived experience for us all. So I hesitated, and by leaving out the independent stories, I almost struggled to see what connected us as individuals. But I believe I figured it out. It's not the four walls of this building, or it's boring uniforms that tether us to one another. Not even a memory, a shared laugh, or scandal. Our individual lived experiences may not be the thread that weaves us together, but we are still tied to each other, just by something more, by something that isn't seen by the eyes, but is felt by the heart. The past six years have shown us that time does not grant the privilege of patience. It does not wait for us. It does not wait for us to grow and learn, it does not hold the door open while we stumble to catch up, when they say the time flies, it really doesn't hit you until you're racing to chase it in the hope of cutting off its wings. So we learn the hard way that time will do what time always does, and it will move on. However, it's not as sad as it seems because with time, there always comes change. See, when I was a child, I wanted to be an astronaut. And no, not because I wanted to sound cool, but because I actually wanted to be an astronaut. I bought space books and telescopes, I was convinced that I wanted to spend the rest of my life shooting through the air thousands of miles above the ground. Now I'm afraid of heights. <laughs> and I can't even climb the ladder to my attic without the palms of my hands sweating. My point is that we change. And the people that we were yesterday are not the people that we are today. It's part of the development and self-discovery that comes with time. I still remember the first day I stepped foot in Kalash de Kiran, and I'm sure you all do too. We were like chickens thrown into a fox's den, Little did we know we ended up being the foxes because, oh boy, did we put this school through some hardship. <laughs> but look at us now. If only our little first year selves could see us now. If only they could see the good people we have grown up to be. It took six years for us to grow up. But just as we grew up, we grew in. We wrapped around each other like ivy and embedded our roots in our surroundings. We built a life system of our own within Kalash de Kiran and like plants, began producing the very oxygen that the other needed to breathe. Look, you may not like to admit it, but we are a lot more dependent on each other than some of us like to believe. <laughs> what would we have been without each other? What made CCO a second home if it wasn't our classmates, our friends, our teachers? To our teachers, you nourished us like children of your own and taught us more as people than books ever could. Perhaps we struggled to see it in the past, but this year has given us a new appreciation for those teachers that go the extra mile for us. This room is filled with students whose hearts will forever hold the impact that each and every single one of you have had on them, and I know that I speak for everyone when I say thank you. Thank you for it all. To my classmates, my friends, we've accomplished so much in what feels like so little time. I want you all to remember that if school has taught us anything so far, it is that not all achievements can be measured on a numerical scale. We are nothing but numbers to the educational system, and they can try all they want to categorize our performance on a data curve, but the group of students sitting in front of me right now have proven to be so much more. We've seen the artists in you, the poets. We've seen the athletes and the engineers. Some of you fall to your deaths in front of a book of definitions. But if we gave you a piece of wood and a nail, you'd build us a house worthy of a king. Be proud of that. <laughs> we
we have one more hurdle to jump in June. I can't promise you that it will be our last, because life is like that. It likes to keep us out of breath sometimes. So expect it. Expect to be challenged and trialed. Prepare to not have everything go your own way and learn to adapt and overcome. Go for whatever it is, even if you are terrified. I may be afraid of heights, but I'm still shooting for my stars. Let's go and show the world what each and every single one of us are capable of. So finally, I end this speech with great honor by saying that we will leave the four walls of Kalash de Kiran as the graduates of today, and we will enter the world as the adults of tomorrow. To the graduating class of 2022, let's do ourselves proud. Thank you. Wow, I'm so glad I don't have to make a speech after that. <laughs> I just want to thank, um, thank you, Victoria, that was amazing. And thank you to all of our sixth year students. Your speeches were just fantastic and they blew us away. I also want to thank Rosemary Lucy, Kate Wall and Sarah Daly, um, who were playing the music throughout in between all the speeches. I think we're ready for another little bit of music, so we're going to return to our school choir, and they're going to perform um, Heart That Matters Most. waiting for student awards (laughs) 
so before I begin, I'd like to say that there are many awards this afternoon being presented. It has taken many hours and much debate to arrive at the final list of recipients, which is absolutely testament to Calibre students present here this evening. So thank you all. Our awards cover a wide ranging area of education and achievement. They mark the deep respect held by staff for the ability of the individual students. These pupils exemplified the meaning of being a true overall master of their respective subjects. And for that, we applaud them. We begin with the English Award. The Senior English Award recipient is a student with in the world of literature and composition. They have consistently displayed an inordinate ability and aptitude in the field of the English language. The English prize goes to Matthew O'Rourke. Well Matthew. Our senior, our senior Irish award is given to the student who has a wonderful flair and craw for our native tongue. They have endeavoured to excel in every aspect of the course during their time here at Colossia Ciaran. They have worked exceptionally well in both their written and spoken Irish. The Irish prize goes to Ruth Daly. Price is awarded to the student who has shown a superb mathematical ability. This student has consistently performed and displayed an understanding of the world of problem solving throughout their school life. The Senior Maths Prize goes to Victoria Muko. The Senior Modern Language Award is given to students who have displayed a flair for French, Italian, Spanish and German. These students have consistently worked diligently to achieve their full potential in their chosen language. The award for Senior French goes to Nicole Offer. The award for Senior Italian goes to Aya Ismail. Senior German goes to Ruth Daly. And senior Spanish, Victoria Muco.
recipient of her Senior Home Economics Award has been a fantastic role model for the subject. She has worked with diligence for the past two years and is most deserving of this acknowledgement. The award goes to Chloe Greeny. Our Senior Engineering Award is given for dedication to the world of engineering throughout six years here at Clos Chiron. The recipient has been focused in all three areas of their course. A number of worthy candidates were in contention for this award. However, the winner is Kate Wall. The Design and Communication Graphics Award is for students' all-round ability to perform at a very high level and to foster a positive attitude towards the subject. This award is in recognition of the hard work and positive attitude displayed over the past two years. Congratulations, Diana Nadelku. For six-year construction studies, there are many candidates, once again, that are worthy of being considered for this award, as there have been considerable improvement throughout this year. The student who has been chosen has demonstrated overall excellence in technical drawing, theory, practical, and has completed all homework and project work and schedule, as well as being a most pleasant and cheerful member of the class. The Construction Studies Award goes to Jake O'Connor. Our Margaret Crowley Business Award is in honour of a former member of staff, who you heard earlier, been called from the podium, who taught business studies, Miss Margaret Crowley. Welcome, Margaret. This award goes to a student that shows great initiative, business acumen, and determination to do well. She has performed consistently well in business since first year, demonstrating an excellent knowledge and understanding of the subject area. The award goes to Nicole Offer. Geography is a study of places and the relationship between people and their environments. This award is for a geographer who has shown that they can explore both the physical properties of Earth's surface and the human society spread across it. They have also demonstrated that they can examine how human culture interacts with the natural environment and the way that locations and places can have an impact on people. Our Senior Geography Award recipient is Abigail Lappin.
Up next, we have our physics award. This student has shown great interest and enthusiasm for physics. They have demonstrated great effort to excel in the subject, which is well-deserved results throughout the past two years. Well done to Angelica Zaranova. The following student contributes positively to all aspects of the subject biology. They have positive relationships with students and teachers alike. They have an outstanding work ethic and display exemplary discipline and determination. Our Senior Biology Award goes to Ruth Daly. Our next award is for effort and engagement in chemistry. The winner of this award has been extremely dedicated to their studies, has been diligent and disciplined throughout the course, and has maintained a very high standard in all aspects of their work. The winner is Victoria Muko. Next up is our Computer Science Award. To succeed in this subject, students need to be good problem solvers with a measure of resilience. This generation of computer scientists will shape the technology we'll use all of us one day in everyday life. The winner of this award is a student who is diligent and innovative and has produced work of the highest standard. This student is Igor Bodrov. The Award for Excellence in Politics and Society is presented to the student who has demonstrated steadfast application to critical analysis, reflection and the contextualization of social and political issues. This student is to be commended for their passionate dedication to the field, their assiduous pursuit of objectivity and their exemplary conduct in academic discourse. The 2022 Award for Excellence in Politics and Society is presented to Deborah Kuma. For the student that has invested a huge amount of time, effort, creativity and determination to improve their skill set and standards, the Senior Art Award goes to Anna Eulage.
Collage de Curon has had some great success in the area of STEM. Before these next two students leave the school, we would like to acknowledge the contribution they have made to, to the promotion and development of STEM on campus. They have both entered SciFest and Young Scientists several times. In their third year, their efforts were awarded with a highly commended certificate at the BT Young Scientists Final in Dublin. Well done to our Contribution of STEM Award recipients, Oshin brady Hamschlag and Kevin Lawler. award goes to a student who has a unique talent for capturing the world around her through a camera lens. During her time at Colossi Curon, she has photographed countless school events. Last year her talents were acknowledged in the LIT Science Week Photography Competition winning first place. Our Senior Photography Award winner is Courtney Brown. <laughs> Our overall contribution to the LCA program is for the student to engage in a positive attitude in all aspects of the LCA program, work to deadlines and show tremendous effort throughout their work experience and tasks. The award goes to Mansur Akan. Colossi Chiron is known for its amazing musical productions. We were saddened that we didn't get the opportunity to tread the boards this year. However, we will get there again. Each year we require students to give up a huge amount of their time to take part and we are so lucky to have such talented students in our midst. This award goes to a student who has contributed greatly in every single aspect of the school musical over the years and represents someone who has shown dedication to the arts. This particular student has been involved in many school productions, performing at various school events, both as a soloist and a member of the school choir. They have given their time to every aspect of the arts at Colossi Chiron, and we are so very excited to see what the future has in store for this young person. The overall contribution to music and the arts award goes to Deborah Kuma. During their time at Colossi Curon, this next student has shown tremendous commitment to the music department. It's not you, Deborah, again. Sorry, don't panic. <laughs> don't panic. Their efforts and willingness to contribute positively has not gone unnoticed. They too have been involved in the school show and choir over the last six years, while also studying and excelling at composition, theory and harmony, and always contributing positively to their class. We wish them the very best in their future studies. Our Senior Music Award goes to Matthew O'Rourke. The 
Heidi Lohan. Lohan's special contribution to Cláudia Corona Award is in honour in honour of another VIP present in the audience today, Eileen. Most welcome. This award is given to the student who embodies the attributes of Eileen. They are kind, caring, and have a very positive attitude. They are supportive of fellow students, embody school spirit, and enhance school life. They face every single challenge with a smile. The Eileen Lone Award goes to Ms. Kate Wall. Our next award will be given in absentia. The Brendan, that means the person isn't here. The, 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 the Brendan McIntoff Award is given to the best overall male sports performer in Form 6. This student has consistently performed exceptionally at Benson School, outside of school, representing the school with absolute pride. This young man is a true leader on the soccer field, and we are truly grateful for all his contributions to sport during his time here in Cloche Curran. The Brendan McIlduff Victor Ladorum Award goes to Mr. Keane Shinners. <laughs> the Michael O'Donoghue Award is given to the best overall female sports performer. During her time on campus, the student has been involved in various sports where she has represented the school, including basketball, camogie, and athletics. Throughout the past six years, she has contributed positively to the promotion and organization of sporting events. Today, we would not, like to acknowledge her contributions for the past six years. The Michael O'Donoghue Victor Ladorum goes to Ms. Kayla Asregardi. <laughs> this afternoon is the Senior Principal's Perpetual Cup, our Student of the Year Award. This award is for the student who has performed consistently in all areas throughout senior cycle. A student who has shown what it is to be respectful whilst also gaining respect of both peers and teachers alike. Their dedication to achieve in the classroom along with their commitment to extracurricular activities is to be commended. She has been involved in our student mentor program, Gashka, student council, and scored top marks in the Irish Maths Olympiad. I think I've given it away. She has perfect attendance and somehow has not missed a single day of school this past year. She has shown that with a good attitude, ability, and hard work, you can realize your full potential. It is my great honor to announce our Senior Student of the Year 2022 is Victoria Mukul. <laughs> And that concludes our presentation of awards. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Carr. 
I'd now like to call on Zara El Hassani and Deborah Kuma to sing I Won't Give Up, accompanied by Harris McNamara. Thank you, Zara and Deborah. How fortunate Can are we, we to have such talent in this school? We really are lucky. So good afternoon, everyone. It gives me great pleasure and privilege to be here today amongst you, the graduates of 2022. Your families, 
friends, tutors and teachers. The excitement over the last few weeks has been palpable and I know in my heart it's for the exams in June and not for today's celebrations. Yet the day has finally arrived and all your planning has been worth it. It is an end of an era, but it's also the beginning of something new, the next phase of your life, the next chapter of your history. You have overcome adversity, you have faced challenges, you've pushed yourself outside of your comfort zone, you've experienced new ways of teaching and learning, and throughout it all, you have remained strong and committed to your efforts. You've been given the skill set, you have tested those skills, and now you're going to implement what you have learned to create a future that you desire. It's been wonderful to hear from your fellow classmates about your experiences, your memories, and your adventures in Cloche de Quiron. I too have many memories of your time here. But my lasting memory of the class of 2022 is the warmth and kindness you have shown each other and all the staff. There are many diverse personalities and different interests amongst you. You have always demonstrated a true sense of camaraderie. You have encouraged, supported and listened to each other. I can honestly say that it's a great pleasure to have had this opportunity to work with you. You may have shown a love of loitering and lounging around instead of getting to class on time. However, you have demonstrated your amazing abilities and achievements throughout your school years, even if you ignored rules at times. But ultimately, you remained dedicated and you have strived to reach your goals. We've seen you display your talents and your imagination. You have entertained us with hilarious happenings. You have shared classes, tried many subjects, made acquaintances and true friends, whilst creating memories that you will hold dear to your heart. And of course, if you ever forget them, there will always be an image here showcasing them. You continually looked out for each other and were there for each other. You have grown to recognize your own self-worth. And for all this, we here today are extremely proud of you. This is an exciting time for you. And as they say, the world is your oyster. There are many opportunities that await you. There are many routes too to reach your destination. Whatever route you decide to take, never give up and continue to make an effort like you have done throughout your years here. Six years ago, your parents entrusted us with their little angels, their little first years. Your parents, your teachers, you and I have formed a partnership and collaborated with each other. Today, we see mature, well-rounded and confident young adults who are about to embark on the next stage of life's journey. Your parents, guardians and teachers have afforded you many opportunities and you embraced those opportunities to the fullest. We've had mantras, we've had acronyms, but above all, we've had you. You are what has made this school the place it is over the last six years. You have had a role in establishing the history of the school. You have created the atmosphere and set the mood to help, the school, to help make the school what it is today. And we are thankful and grateful to you. I wish you well, I wish you success, and I wish you happiness for your future. Always be true in your words, make an effort, believe in yourself, challenge yourself, and show dignity, kindness, and respect. Be kind to yourself as well as to others. Never forget that happiness, that your happiness, your strength, and your success comes from within. When we think of school, we may think of results and achievements, but I want you to also reflect on your teachers, the fun times, and the hard times that perhaps you worked through. All these elements have helped to make you who you are today. Finally, I wish you the very, very best in your exams next month, and I wish you success and happiness in all your future endeavors. Be proud of who you are, and always remember that you are part of the CCO family.
Thank you, Ms. O'Brien. So now we're going to relive your six years here in Kalosh Kiran in picture form. Um, our presentation on the screens on your left and the right will be accompanied by a performance by our school choir led by fifth year students Emer Leonard, Harris McNamara, and Kieran Wall.
memories back to the tables in room 20 hearing your laughter through the doors this is your home cco I'd now like to call on Nicole Offer to come forward and to deliver some thank yous on behalf of the students. I would like to thank everyone for your attendance here today. We, the graduating class of 2022. We are extremely grateful that you're all here with us to celebrate such a momentous occasion in our lives. To the members of the Board of Management, thank you for all the work that you put in behind the scenes. We are in no doubt that the operation of the school would not be possible without your diligent hard work. To our senior management team, Principal Mr. Sullivan, Ms. Anna Ferlo, Deputy Principals, Ms. Canty, and Mr. O'Shaughnessy. <laughs> Thank you for providing us with such a safe and joyful environment over the past six years. In this school, you've created a culture of diversity in people, pursuits, and thoughts. This school has exposed us to a variety of walks of life and has thus expanded our palace of understanding. The class of 2022 is grateful to you, Mr. Sullivan, Ms. Canty and Mr. Shaughnessy for molding an environment where people feel free to be themselves without a fear of retribution. To our parents, thank you for your assistance in reaching this finish line. Looking back, I suppose we are grateful that you took up that part-time position as backup alarm clocks, <laughs> tearing us out of bed after lousy attempts at sleeping in. Surprise, surprise, we actually did hear the first ring. All jokes aside, only with your irritating dedication to this role, we had the opportunity to experience more moments in this school. And on a day like today, we can reflect on how those reluctantly made moments have transformed into cherished memories. So all credit is due to the parents and guardians in the audience for waking us up and encouraging us to come in and experience more laughter, more annoyance, more stress, and more love within these four worlds. To our teachers, gone and present, we, the graduating class of 2022, are infinitely indebted to you. You have been exceptional guides in each of our individual educational journeys. From you, we have gained a solid foundation of knowledge, stable enough to be built upon in coming years. Your relentless support and admirable patience will remain with us all as we venture into this next phase of our lives. We will seek out your traits of genuine devotion and care in the vessels of others. As teachers, you enlist the responsibility of overseeing and aiding in the development of such young, fragile minds. On behalf of the graduating class, I would like to commend you all for performing extraordinarily. You have been exemplary influencers and have set the standards that we will hold the rest of the world to. You are brilliant teachers and truly good people, so thank you. Furthermore, thank you to everyone who helped in making this ceremony such a beautiful, memorable event. To the Angelic Voices of the Choir, orchestrated by none other than Mr. Moore. <laughs> Ms. Bowles and Ms. Power, you outdo yourselves each year with the, <laughs> with the decorations and the overall organization of the ceremony's proceedings. You should really consider event management as part-time jobs. <laughs> Doing well. Tom Brendan, you more than likely assembled the stage I'm standing on right now, so thank you too. <laughs> Further thanks to Mr. Delari and his crew, namely Fatima Shah, Kinga Zayak, Gabrielle Rebolt, Master Akon, Grace Wall, and Vicky Zhang, 
for the brilliant artwork behind me. And And to all the other fourth years who have sacrificed their time to make this graduation perfect. If everyone could indulge me for a moment more, I would like to extend a very special thank you to one specific person in the audience. Miss Sarah Ryan. <laughs> Your six years, the graduating class of 2022, would like to say thank you. We know that we have not always made your job easy. Matter of fact, I know that I've not always made your job easy. <laughs> However, somehow, some way, your treatment of us as collective never diminished. The individual relationships you've held with each and every single one of us never turned sour. We were fortunate enough to still be welcomed by you each morning doing your base class tours, wearing an unconditional smile. You have been unapologetic in expressing your concern, pride, and faith in us over the past four years. We believe it's about time that we recognize all of your selfless efforts. Ms. O'Brien, could you please accompany me on the stage as we would like to offer you a token of appreciation for your unwavering kindness and protection over us. It has been an honour being a student of Colossia Curon for the past six years. So I would like to take this moment to say thank you to you all for being truly good people. Thank you. No. So a hard act to follow all of that. Um, thank you, uh, Nicole. Uh, much of, many of the people that you thank there, um, I would like, I suppose, on behalf of the school and formally to echo once again, to thank absolutely everyone uh, that has been involved in making today's um, celebration so memorable and so perfect. Uh, I won't go over everyone again specifically. I do want to thank in a particular way our parents' council. Our parents' council have for weeks and months been working behind the scenes in relation to catering, in relation to aspects of the stage and so, so many areas of the school and they are incredibly positive. They are an incredibly important part of our school community and they too every year help out. So I'll give a round of applause for our parents' council, please. <laughs> credit, credit for our beautiful graduation cake today must go to Sarah Wall. And again, a huge thank you to Ken from the Anacotti Farm Shop, who sponsored the food um, that is outside for the catering afterwards um, for today's graduation ceremony. So for Sarah and for Ken from Anacotti Farm Shop, let's give them a round of applause. So we're nearly there, just two more. I suppose my final word of thanks has to go to you, our graduating class. Um, I mean, I, it's humbling to see such articulate, educated and speakers and, you know, the ability with which you stood up here and presented. It's absolutely inspiring. Uh, from my job, uh, it is nothing short of, that's what job satisfaction ap absolutely represents. And I'm confident that all of you going out the, into the world are well prepared um, you know, and more than capable. And you need to believe that too. Uh, equally, today has to represent tremendous job satisfaction. I know it's not a job. For all of the parents in the audience here, you have to be incredibly proud. And I suppose at the start of my speech, I was talking about the pride that we would share having, before having even heard half those speeches. But honestly, it is humbling in my job, and it has to be, especially for you as a parent, to see what we just witnessed here today. So, um, finally, to conclude, I would like to invite everyone to be upstanding as I present to you our graduation class of 2022. And to our graduating class, congratulations. I would now like to confirm you graduates of Kalashi Kiran. Congratulations. Well done.
Hello, hello. Oh, sorry. Mr. Brightside, Mr. Brightside, Mr. Brightside.
Yeah. Yeah. 